Welcome to Game Phase Show. We're back. We did it. Sorry about the little missed start there with the no audio. If you're watching on YouTube, we've already edited that out and you, you don't know the difference, do you? You've just joined us live. Uh, it's, we've got a wonderful show for you this evening. First up, we're going to be talking to Nathan McCree. Uh, I've never spoken to him before. I'm quite excited about this. Quite a big deal for me. It's like it, it keeps happening now, doesn't it, with all these amazing, wonderful interviews. We're doing him just next two minutes. Uh, after that, we've got Chip Bat. We've got Oracle versus JK LOL, our first American competitor. And we're going to get our ST in for uh, the, the post battle analysis because mine wasn't up to scratch last week. So we're going to get someone in to do it proper. <laughs> uh, we've got a little reminder as well your Fury competition. We've still got 20 copies of that to give away. If you get yourself on our Twitter and our Facebook at Look at Pins Post and retweet, share, all the rest of it, and you can win yourself a free copy of that. We're going to be announcing the winners on Sunday's radio show. We also have a new competition that I'm going to be talking about later because I've got it here. I just got sent a box of stuff, so I'm going to give it to you. Um, yeah, that's some of it there. <laughs> hey, uh, these are the free CDs. Oracle got a load of these from Cheap Beats. We're giving these buggers away. People just keep sending us stuff now. It's all getting a bit out of hand. Stay tuned and we'll let you know how to get hold of all that. But yeah, Sunday's show is Retro Joe's and that's always an absolute extravaganza for free stuff. I'm really, really looking forward to it. Now, Nathan McCree is famous for Tomb Raider along with numerous other games. Over the years, in December 2016, the Royal Philharmonic Orchestra performed the Tomb Raider Suite. It was a huge success. And shortly after, he did a Kickstarter asking for £160,000. They smashed that and got £194,000 to record the Tomb Raider Suite at Abbey Road Studios. We've got him live on the phone right now. Hello. Hello, Graham. How are you? Oh, I'm all right. It was a bit. It was a bit chaotic there. You know, we get all prepped, we get all happy and ready, and then there's no audio when we go live. <laughs> well, these things happen. We get used to that kind of stuff and working in audio, don't we? Yes, yes. Oh my word, yes. How are you doing tonight? Are you all right? You're happy. You look like you're in a very good mood. Yeah, mate. Yeah, I'm. I, you know, I, I'm. I'm beaming from ear to ear. You know, I've been pleasantly uh, surprised by the support from the fans, uh, you know, with the Kickstarter campaign. So, you know, yeah, I'm, I'm a happy chap at the minute. That was actually my first question. You know, are you, were you surprised by the sort of the support of the live show and then the support of the following Kickstarter? Because it was, it was immense. It was absolutely insane. I couldn't believe it. Yeah, I mean, the, the, the show, uh, we were a little bit concerned about that because uh, ticket sales weren't as fast as we uh, really wanted them to be. Um, but... Uh, you know, last minute, again, you know, they all came through and we had over 2,000 people there. So, you know, uh, th that was just an incredible evening. It was, it was really fantastic. Blew me away completely. Um, and, 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 you know, and with the Kickstarter as well, it was, we had an initial surge, which was really exciting, uh, really exciting. And then it kind of flattened out for two weeks. And I was thinking, you know, we're not going to make this. Um, so we had a rethink about our marketing strategy and, um, uh, you know, and, and about the merchandise we're offering and um, and all the, the other sort of goodies and things. And... Um, yeah, you know, we turned it around, and and again, in in, in the last sort of forty eight hours, uh, people just came out from nowhere, and it just took off. And and again, I was completely blown away by it. It was fantastic. It, it, I mean, it's it's crazy, isn't it? Because I, I I do a radio show every Sunday. We play video game music. That's that's our whole thing. But. Right. Even within that world, we consider ourselves like tiny and niche and not in the realm of £194,000. That's just crazy to me. Uh, it must have been a very, very exciting ride for you. And for me, surprise is the big thing, really. <laughs> yeah, it, it was uh, one of the most nail-biting experiences I've ever gone through. Um, you know, because those Kickstarter campaigns, it's like all or nothing, you know. And um, when I started thinking about the campaign, um, 
and we started working on the budget uh, with my business partner, we, we actually started thinking about uh, asking for about £65,000 and, you know, should, you know, could we do it on that sort of a budget? And the more we thought about it and the more we um, worked out our costs, it just went up and up and up and up until eventually we hit the sort of 160,000 mark and I thought, we're just not going to get it, you know. And, and I looked at other uh, music projects on uh, um, and particularly orchestral projects on Kickstarter, and none of them are asking anything like the sum that we were asking for. Um, I, but I th the the thing that I wanted to stand my ground on was, uh, you know, a top quality uh, professional recording. And the only way I was going to get that was to hire the Royal Philharmonic Orchestra and go to Abbey Road Studios. And you know, of course, that's expensive, but I felt that that's what Tomb Raider deserved. So I stuck to my guns and I said to to my business partner, "Look, let's go for it. Let's just see what happens." I'm 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 convinced that the two major fans will will support us, and and they did. Um, so yeah, it was a fantastic success. <laughs> massively, massively. I'm so so ridiculously impressed. And I I've noticed recently actually that games of that era and maybe it's because you know the a lot of the people involved are like parents now and they've got a bit more money where they do want to support things like this uh, they're sort of getting behind it where are you up to now in terms of the kickstarter in terms of the rewards and the lps going out and all the rest of it where are we right now right so um i've spent the last month going through all the um emails and comments uh that came through during the campaign um cataloging all uh, purchases that everyone's made um, I'm only about halfway through it so there's probably another month to go yet um, and basically I'm putting all that data into a spreadsheet so we know exactly how many items of each piece of merchandise we need to make then we can work out production costs um, we've only been able to make sort of close estimates on those for now until we know the exact numbers um, so then we can work that out. Then we can go into production and start uh, making all the stuff for everybody. Um, we have managed to book the recording session at Abbey Road now, and we've booked the orchestra, the conductor, and we've also increased the size of the choir from 16 to 40 singers. So we, uh, we're going to use the Metro voices for the choir. Um, Robert Zeigler, who did the uh, conducting for the live show, he's going to be doing the recording as well. Um, and it was, uh, if I could correct you, actually, it was the Royal Philharmonic Concert Orchestra uh, yeah. that we used uh, at the Apollo, and it's the Royal Philharmonic Orchestra we're going to use for the recording. They're different orchestras, um, but under the same umbrella. So... Um, uh, the Royal Philharmonic Orchestra uh, do mostly recordings and the concert orchestra do mostly live performances. So that's how that works. Um, so that's all booked. We've got a date for uh, the 16th and the 17th of October. That's a Monday and Tuesday. We have three three-hour recording sessions on the Monday and two three-hour recording sessions on the Tuesday. Um, so that's kind of where we are at the minute. I want, to, I want to ask you, actually, so obviously um, Kickstarter is quite a, a new phenomenon in terms of funding, in terms of getting stuff out there. Uh, how else has the industry changed for you? Because you've, I mean, you've been there since pretty much the beginning, haven't you? Yeah. Uh, yeah, you know, I, I, I started out in 93 working on uh, Sega Mega Drive, which is just a chip-based console. So, you know, I was the FM literally... Team, yeah. Yeah, you know, programming numbers using a QWERTY keyboard. That, that's how we made music then. Um, a few years later, when the CD consoles came in, that enabled us to use the more professional music sequences like Cubase and Pro Tools and stuff like that. So suddenly we had to really up our game in terms of music production because we were competing with, you know, obviously the, uh, the, the pop bands and and you know live orchestras at the time so you know it was that was a really big leap for us in 1994 um, and it kind of forced me to perfect my orchestral production skills but still using synthesizers um, because you know we didn't have a budget then to to hire a live orchestra so you know all the music that I wrote for Tomb Raider was written using uh, the synthesizers at the time and this is why I've been chasing this project for the last 20 years, because I've always wanted to hear it played by a live orchestra. <laughs> now it's finally happening, you know. It's taken me a while, but um, 
you know, it, 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 that's not totally down to my fault. Um, quite the contrary, you know, I've been pushing hard for this, um, you know, for a long, long time. Yeah, and 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 you've you've very much got there, and not, you've not just got there, and you've been validated by nearly two hundred k as well. It's like, it's not just a dream and a love of yours. It's like it's all these people. It still amazes me because I'm into this, but it still blows my mind that so many other people share the passion. You know, they that they they want to hear it on such a big scale because I, I, I can see why though, because with especially with the first Tomb Raider, that. The, not just the score, but all the sound effects, the way it all came in. There was a little bit of magic there, wasn't there? I, I, got, I got dizzy the first time I played it. I, it was very, very overwhelming in terms of, I don't want to say realism, but this other world. And the audio was a huge, huge part of that. Uh, so I'm going to sneak you a yeah, thank you. I mean, you know, a, a, lot of, a lot of it was to do with the constraints we were working under. You know, we, we had memory limitations. We had... Um, you know, there was only so much stuff that we could fit on a CD. We were also really under time pressure to, to get the game finished. Um, and, you know, making games back then in 1996, it was completely different to how it is now. You know, now we have game design documents and audio um, specification spreadsheets and all sorts of, you know, documentation that go into, you know, organizing and managing teams that are, you know, sometimes in excess of 200 people. And back then, we had a team of 12 people, and we had no documentation whatsoever. We were literally, you know, making it up as we went along. You know, somebody would say, oh, wouldn't it be good if I could do this? And someone went, yeah, I think I can do that, you know, and then they'd sort of program it, and half a day later, she was doing what somebody suggested in the morning. And, and that's how the game progressed. And, you know, from my perspective, um, I, I'm I'm very much into um, you know submersion. You know I love watching movies. I love just losing myself in 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 movies and the, and the sort of the soundscape that movies can provide. And I wanted to do the same thing with Tomb Raider. I wanted to create a world which, as you were playing it, you felt like you were in it. Um, and you know because there wasn't much time to write the music. I think I I did the whole project in about three weeks. Um, there wasn't really a lot of music to spread across the whole game, so I really had to rely on the sound effects and the ambiences to to create, uh, you know, an atmosphere that was interesting that kind of drew you into the game. So, you know, it was it was a lot about the the constraints that we were working with that that helped shape the game as much as anything else. And then twenty years later, you've got a standing or, or a standing ovation for it, and everyone's. Uh, <laughs> I can't even imagine what your mindset would be. Um, just to remind everyone, we are live right now, and we are getting quite a bit of feedback. If we can get that fed to me, uh, Calipi Alice said, "Hi, Nathan. Hi, yeah." Yeah, I'll just pass that hello, on. Hello. Uh, Reiner has come up with, uh, with quite a good one here. It would be awesome if the first three games were re-released, remastered, containing an orchestra. What are your thoughts on that? It would be a great idea. I'd love it. Yeah, of course. Um, you know, a, a lot of games are getting remade these days, but um, unfortunately, that's not my decision. You know, it's in the hands of the publishers that own the IP. So, um, you know, if you if you if you want those games to be re remade, you have to um, uh, you know badger the, the publishers and try and convince them that you that you know they should do it. If enough people show support then they might see that it's uh, you know financially viable thing to do. But, you know, the, these things do cost a lot of money to make. Uh, well, do you know what, though? If Shenmue 3 can happen, then at this point, I, I, I believe in anything, to be honest, because I was sure that... <laughs> I'm sure that series was completely dead, and then suddenly, you know, it was just there at E3 going, yeah, we're making Shenmue. So that, that, I've given up now. I've given up trying to predict or wonder. I... I you said you worked on the Mega Drive, and obviously that's the FM sound chip, and you were talking a lot about working within constricts and limits and all that. We're big, big supporters of chiptune on this show, and I'm just wondering if you follow any of that world at all. Uh, you know, I've got a few mates in the industry who've been in it as long as me that, that did chip tunes like me, and, um, yeah, it's great to hear those tunes. You know, I'm a big fan of that stuff because I grew up playing Space Invaders and Pac-Man and stuff like that, so... Uh, you know, uh, the, the the music tunes in Pac-Man was about three seconds long, and Space Invaders just had that single note, didn't it? Did, 
<laughs> well, it, it, it's it's crazy yeah. now though, because there's kids. You know, there's six, I I have I've met like 16, 17 year olds that come up to me at gigs and they're sat there with Game Boys or at the home with the Mega Drives, making brand new music right now. And one of the things that does entice them into that scene, obviously, it wasn't called chip tune back then, was the fact that there are those limits. You know, and it's almost like showing off of what can you do with such a tiny amount of space and data and all that. Yeah, you know? well, well, that's it. That's the challenge. You know, it, it's trying to trying to maximise the sound out of such a tiny little thing. You know, uh, with like you say, you know, extremely limited memory. You know, I remember one of the games that I worked on, which was uh, Asterix and the Power of the Gods. Uh, the uh, game designer came to me and he said, Nathan, I want to do orchestral music for the whole game. And I'm like, orchestral music on a, on a chip? I said, you're joking. He said, no, no, we're going to do it. We're going to pick. Loads of really famous orchestral tunes from at least 90 years ago, so we don't have to pay any copyright. <laughs> and I want you to kind of convert them onto, onto the, the FM chip. I'm like, all right, okay. So off we went. I mean, I had to reserve one channel for sound effects, so I was left with five note polyphony, and I had to convert these, you know, fully orchestrated scores down to five notes. I mean, it was, it was a real challenge, but. If I may say so myself, they sounded really good, and we got an accolade for that of uh, um, best Mega Drive music. So, um, you know, it, it, it's really good fun working with stuff like that. You know, you, you don't really get a, a huge amount of recognition for it, but it's it's certainly good fun. Uh, we've had a, another question here. Actually, it's still coming up on my feed, but um, and it, again, this thing of surprise—the resurgence of like old games, particularly love for the soundtrack of these games. We've just been discussing. Like, is it surprising you the way this is this has been happening at the moment? I mean, I've been playing Wonder Boy recently, a brand new Wonder Boy. It felt really strange for me, you know. It was like, oh, but it was great. Uh, you know. Nostalgia is a funny thing, uh, and like I say, if enough people support something or want something, um, they tend to make it happen. You know, I think the reason why I've, uh, you know, carried on pushing for this Tomb Raider Suite soundtrack to be made um, is because the fans have been emailing me for 20 years saying, when are you going to release the soundtrack? When are you going to do it? When are you going to do it? When can I buy it on CD? I think without that, I wouldn't have... I wouldn't have pursued it. I'd have probably given up a long time ago, but I just felt like I couldn't leave it because people kept asking me to do it. And and that's what I'm talking about. You know, if enough people want something for long, you know, for long enough, eventually somebody, somebody will make it happen. Uh, Swiftiness has said, uh, asked if you are, emo I mean, are you going to find it emotional and are you nervous about the recording? Um, well, uh, emotional, probably yes. After after it's done, yeah. I mean, I was really emotional after the Kickstarter campaign made its goal. I mean, I did have a few tears, I have to say, because the stress was enormous for that month, and so I had a, you know, a, an emotional moment then. Um, I think for the recording, I, it's not really about nerves, um, and it was the same at the concert. I wasn't really nervous because. You know, I'm working, and when I'm working, I'm 100% focused, and I'm doing my job, and people are relying on me to, you know, answer questions and sort out technical problems. So there isn't really time to be nervous. Um, you know, you're part of a team, and you're all working together to get something done in the time that you've got to get it done. So, um, you know, it's very much a sort of professional situation. Um, I was a little bit nervous on the concert when I had to get on stage and do my thank you speech. That was a bit daunting because I had, you know, 2,000 hardcore fans in front of me and the Royal Philharmonic Concert Orchestra behind me, you know, and, and everyone was waiting to hear what I had to say. So that was that was quite a nerve-wracking moment. Um, um, but again, you know, I, I, I was in my working professional mode and I had a job to do, which was to thank some people, and I got on and I, and I, and I did it. Um, so, no, I don't think I'll be nervous. Um, I'm going to be really excited, I think. Yeah, you should be. And in terms of standing up on stage in front of him, I, I, I think you could have you would have had to have worked very hard to not pulled off just saying, thank you, because they were all there. It's not like they were like, come on, impress me, or anything like that. They were like... 
I love Perfect. you. I love you. <laughs> and I think also it was quite nerve wracking because all my family were there, and uh, and I think it was the first time they'd sort of seen me in my professional capacity like that. Um, and of course, you know, in front of all those people, uh, yeah, yeah, it, it was a it was a proper emotional moment. Yeah. The one and only time that my father has seen me play live in any way whatsoever, because I, I, you know, I do sort of live gigs and events and stuff. The, the time I knew my dad was coming, I couldn't handle it to the point where I dressed as a Boy Scout, shaved my beard <laughs> off, and just thought, "I'll just deal with it this way. I'll just be, I'll freak everyone out." And yeah, it was a bit. It all went a bit weird. <laughs> I, I went on stage, and no one else was on stage. It was dead early, so I was just there as a scout. <laughs> It went all right, though. I'm not very good at dealing with those sort of situations. I tend to just push it too yeah, far. Yeah, yeah, once, once you get into the music, you kind of forget what's going on around you, don't yeah. you? Yeah. Oh, they were all, all the audience were spanking me bum and all that as I was playing. It all worked out very, very well. Um, so, obviously, you know, the easy answer to this, the obvious answer is, you know, a lot of hard work and a little bit of luck. But I would just wonder if uh, you've got any advice for anyone that wants to get into the industry and wants to follow in your footsteps. Uh, um, you know, it, again, it's a it's a different place than it used to be twenty years ago. Um, I think it it's always important to to meet people and get to know people. Um, you know, I that's probably your easiest and fastest way in is to you know get to know some producer or or somebody's you know a friend of yours that works for uh, a games company. And you know, go out, go out with them. Go out drinking with them. Go out and meet them. Go and have a pizza together. Get to know them. Get friendly with them. And then you know, when when they're overloaded with work, chances are they'll think of you. Um, you know, people these days I think tend to work with people that they like or people that they know. Um, and in music, I would say that's even more so. Um, you know, I do sound design as well. Um, it's probably a a bit easier to get a job as a sound designer than a composer and um, the composer slots are usually all taken or they just use freelancers and in which case they freelance a particular person because of what he does so if you're coming fresh into the industry you know without any experience it's unlikely you're going to get picked i do use people that haven't um had any industry experience i do give people a chance i'm working with a chap at the minute uh, in England, who I think is a really talented guy, um, he came to me on the internet and just said, "You know, do you have any, you know, work that you could send my way?" I listened to his his show reel that he'd done, and I thought, "Yeah, you know, he's, he, he writes some interesting stuff." So I said, "Well, look, I don't have anything right now, but when I do have something, you know, I'll give you a call." So I did, and um, yeah, now now he's writing some tunes for one of my projects. So you know, it's. It's possible. There are guys out there that do, that do give um, you know the, the 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 new people a chance. Um, but uh, again, it's about getting to know people. You know, I this guy when he came to me, we struck up a conversation, and I got to know him, and then I talked to him on Skype, and I liked him. You know, and that's very much part of it. Um, you know, it, it's that it's networking. It, it's uh, yeah, of course. It's it a tricky is. one. You know, go to the game shows, go to the conventions. You know, go and meet people, hang out with them. You very quickly you know, okay. start recognising, oh, yeah, I saw you at whatever, and yeah, it happens. I, I, it's a weird one. They, yeah. That's that's exactly the answer, isn't it? It's good, positive yeah. networking. And staying on that, actually, I, I actually, just before I do move on, the, I like the fact that somebody sent you something and you actually listened to it. That gives that probably gives a lot of people hope who are fans of the show and all the rest of it. But I would say, what are your thoughts then on, because uh, we, we, we're never sure on this, but like sort of, you know, working for exposure, you know, where do you draw the line under that sort of thing? Yeah, <clears throat> you know, I've done a lot of that as well. And, um, you know, it's not, it's not fun. I, I I don't really agree with it. I don't I don't really agree when producers say, you know, oh, you know, send us a tune and we'll give you a credit. You know, that's not really on because everybody has to pay their bills. You know, you don't expect an artist to paint you a picture and 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 what he puts his name on it. Yeah, well, of course he's going to put his name on it. You know, you, you know, you've got to pay these people. Mm. Um, it's like somebody writes a book, you know, you don't expect them to just put their name on it, you know, you have to buy the book. 
same way with music. You have to buy the music. You have to buy a piece of meat that a butcher chops off his cow. You know, it's the same thing. You know, why should you get the piece of meat for free? You know, it just doesn't make sense. I don't buy that tactic. Um, but I know a lot of producers do that because they they think that, you know, uh, creatives love their work so much, you know, they'll they'll do it for free. Well, you know, it's just not practical to do that. Um, you know, I've done lots and lots of pitches for free. And it eats away at your time. It eats away at your weekends when you should be with your family. You know, it eats away at your, at your income. You know, that whole weekend or that whole week you've spent writing a tune, you're not earning any money. Um, you know, that makes it very, very difficult for, for creative people to survive. It's not really a fair situation. I think, um, you know, if you ask somebody to do a pitch, you should pay them for that. Um, you know, if they're then successful, you should pay them more because their pitch was successful. You know, but you shouldn't pay them nothing for it. It's just, it's a bit unfair, I think. Uh, Dusty has said, Nathan, do you think you have what it takes to produce a soundtrack for a full motion picture? <laughs> it's throwing the Gartland down there. <laughs> you know, um, th th there's two things you're talking about there, you know, production and composition. Um, you know, composition is one thing where I sit there and I just write a load of notes and put it all together. Um, production is about taking that music, mixing it so that it all sounds well balanced, and then balancing that against sound effects and voices um, and, 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 you know, that whole package that goes along with a movie. And that's not just a one-man job. That's done by a whole team of people. If you look at the credits involved with you know audio in a movie i mean it's as long as your arms 20 30 40 people involved and there are there are not just one composer but there's often a team of composers you know there's one guy that'll do the main theme tune and then there'll be a team of ghostwriters that sort of copy that tune and expand it into sort of movie scores what we call so you know even people like john williams and and, and some of the other you know big guys out there they, they don't write every single note that's in the movie, even though it says it's composed by such and such. You know, they have a team of writers behind them to help support uh, the workload, because otherwise it's just impossible to do all the movies that, that they get hired for. Um, so, you know, on, you know, do I have the qualifications to do the production? It's not really my forte uh, uh, to, to, to be a sound engineer or a sound producer. I do produce my own music and I do produce other people's music and I do make it sound good. Um, but that's probably not what I would get hired for. Um, I, I would most likely get hired as the composer. Uh, we, I've, I've got to ask this now because we're getting it quite a lot. And it's, are you going to be getting back on board to compose for the new games? Uh, you're sorely missed. <laughs> well, you know, I, I, would, I would very much enjoy that. I would like it. Um, you know, it's been a long time since I, I worked on the actual Tomb Raider games themselves. Um, I have had some conversations about that, but um, there is nothing concrete yet. Ooh, I like that. I like mystery teases. <laughs> that makes me very, very happy. Um, quick shout out, Dean Ripley, Victoria. Well, there's likes and hearts and all that flying all over the place. Hello, hello, hello. <laughs> it's, it's the great thing about doing it live. I get to see Twitch is going absolutely mental. Like, I, I really, really like it. Uh, so what's next for you then? Once you've done this, I'm sure you're very focused right now on getting the recording done and getting all the the rewards out to the backers but you know what's what's next for you really after that well um okay so apart from the recording and then some stretch goals which we want to release the original soundtracks from tomb raider one two and three the untouched versions because the tomb raider suite is very much a sort of um it's the most popular tunes extended so there's lots of new material in the tomb raider suite but we want to release the original soundtracks um untouched um, and that includes the video sequences with the VO and the sound effects stripped out so that would be the kind of next mission but long term um, I would like to do this whole process again with some of my other um, soundtracks my other game soundtracks like Swagman, Soulstar, Heimdall um, 
you know, I, I'd, I'd like to tackle some of those um, because I think they're worthy of release as well. So, um, you know, I'm, I'm hoping that not just the Tomb Raider fans um, will be interested in that, but I'm, I'm hoping some of those, some of the other fans of those games will kind of, you know, come on board a little bit and, and, and support me. Um, I don't know whether I'm, I'm, I'm going to need to do Kickstarter again. I don't know. Uh, that all depends on you know how successful we are with the with the Tomb Raider suite. Um, but aside from the the album that recording with the Tomb Raider suite, we've also uh, I'm, I'm pushing forward with the world tour um, because we, obviously we did that one show in London um, and I wanted to take that around the world. So we're in negotiations with um, Opus Three in America and they are going to be um, rolling out the show across, uh, I think, 200 orchestras across America. Um, I, I, and I think the first of those performances we're likely to see will be the summer of next year. Um, so I, I will probably be engaged in quite a few of those. Um, I won't be touring as such because it, it's, it's not a tour like that. It's basically we throw it out at all the orchestras and then they decide whether to include it in their summer repertoire or their winter repertoire, this kind of thing. And there is an option which if they want me to appear at that show, I can come along and, you know, do a little thank you speech again. So I'm I'm I will probably be involved with that quite a bit next year. Um and then we're hoping to move that across Europe and then also Japan after that. So yeah. So there's all of that to do. And I want to try and get some new game soundtracks out as well. I, 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 um, you, you say there's there's an option to have you there. I think that judging by the chat tonight, there's going to be an absolute clamouring, and people will be people will be outraged if you're not there. Be, <laughs> you, <laughs> that, that's that, that's going to feel so strange though, because even if you just do end up doing three or four or five or whatever, you do, you're going to end up with a that little bit of like a rock star complex, aren't you? Going around and arriving at all these places and everyone being like oh, oh my god oh my god you know it's, it's, what's that going to do to your ego i mean are, are you are you already a humble man or is, is was that ruined a long time ago uh you know i i, I back in 96 97 98 when tomb raider um you know went really big um that was quite a difficult thing to um, take on board for uh, for all of us on the team. You know, we, we had lots of TV interviews and, and lots of press coverage, and um, yeah, that that felt then a rather sort of strange situation to be in. Um, but since then, you know, I've got a bit older and I've mellowed out, and um, it's exciting to be you know pushing this project forward now. But um, I'm I'm. I certainly don't let it go to my head. You know, I, I, I've, I've learned lessons from when I was younger. And, um, you know, this is all, for me, this is all very much about giving the fans what they've wanted for the last 20 years. And, you know, I'm really happy to meet those guys and to, and to come to these shows and to have a drink with them and, 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 you know, sit down and chat with them because they've been wanting it for such a long time and, and they deserve it. Yeah, I'm going. In fact, the last the last comment I'm going to read out because we're running out of time now. That is it's from Steppy Roth, and that's I am so proud of everything you've done 20 years ago, and now I had a blast helping raise money and promote the Tomb Raider suite through my Twitch screen. Would do it again in a heartbeat. Oh, that sums it up basically, doesn't it? That's great. That's great. You know, I thank you very much. Um, you know, I I I I have been humbled by some of the comments some of the amazing comments on the on the kickstarter uh, campaign you know I, I tried reading some of them towards the end and, and you know what i couldn't i couldn't i couldn't verbally speak the, the the whole message it would just it had me choked up you know i think Lara Croft and tomb raider for some people is like their life you know they've lived and breathed it for 20 years and and they are so so passionate about it, and that's not something to to make fun of at all. You know, I'm I'm really passionate about certain movies and certain bands which I grew up with, and I know how that feels. And and so I'm I have full respect for those people. And you know, w without them, I, I I wouldn't be sat where I am today. So you know, I I have them to thank for everything. 
Nathan, thank you so much for joining us this evening. It's been wonderful, actually. I've really enjoyed this. Because anyway. we've, never, we've never spoke before, have we? So, no, you, we haven't. You could have hated me. You could have been sat there five minutes and just gone, nah, say <laughs> it, quit it, kill it. <laughs> um, I'm so glad you didn't hang up on me and it's been all right. And uh, hopefully we'll get to chat again. Make sure you give us a shout when the World Tour's kicking off, eh? And we'll, uh, we'll yeah. help push and promote and become one of the, the people going along the ride with you, eh? Fantastic. Thank you very much, Graham. That would be mu very much appreciated. Nathan, you have a wonderful mate night, my mate. Bye-bye. Thank you very much. <laughs> Everyone stay tuned because right now we're going to carry on with exactly what Nathan was talking about then and it is working within the limits. This is our first ever chip battle with an American. This is JK LOL versus Oracle. Welcome to Chip Battles! This is part two of our UK versus USA. I can't believe we're doing this. I still can't believe we're doing this. <laughs> part two is Oracle. That was all right, that was all right. This is JK Lowell. I'm sorry, what? <laughs> As always, everything for the battle has been written specifically for tonight. Everything you're gonna hear is completely unique. For this evening, they've got three rounds to win you over. And not just you, 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 everyone. Okay, before we started, we flipped a coin. JK, lol, you lost and you're going first. Are you ready? Yeah. Yeah. You lost the first round. Are you, are you gonna win? You're gonna bring it back, yeah? <laughs> Mask up. <laughs> round one, three, two, one. I'll take that. <laughs> Oracle currently undefeated. <laughs> Representing the UK. You ready for this, baby? <laughs> Give it to me, man. Strong, oh my god. That's good, man. That's good. Oh, good boy. JK Lol, are you ready? Yeah! Your reply, Team USA! Give it to me, baby.
take that. Two very strong rounds. Two very, very strong rounds. Uh, where's that? I'm on for the camera. Anyone watching on YouTube? Click the little I in the corner there to vote for your winner. But don't do it until the end, no. Don't do it until the end. But when you do, there's a little I there. Vote for your winner. Let us know. Let us know below in the comments as well. Final round! UK versus USA! The jacket's coming off. The mask is on. He's going Super Saiyan on us. JK Law, give it to me, man. Give it to me. I'll take that, I'll take that one, Vicky! Yeah, mate, mate, that was all right, man, that was all right. All I can hear is JK here. It's going 1-1, one, one. it's going 1-1. One, one. After this round, if you don't start making some noise for your boy. Oracle, you ready? You dropped Tetris at the last one, what are you on about? <laughs> Give it to me man, go on now, please, I want it. That was absolutely bloody dirty, that one, eh? Oh, we got Stephen here. Hello. What up? Hello. You all right? Mr. Dunning Kruger. Oh, yeah. I never know what to call you when you're here. Uh, Sunday Steve, Dunning Kruger. What up? Well, it's just Steve. <laughs> uh, two things in terms of. I forgot to say this at the start. There we go. Insert coin. I'm wearing insert coin. Game face up 20. They sent us a load of these. They've given us this discount code. Game face up 20. There you go. You get a code. Right, let's move on quick because I forgot to do that at the start. UK versus USA. That's the first one we've put out of that. What do you reckon? Yeah. It's, it's, it's worth saying that it's the first one we've put out, but it was the second battle of the night. It's totally irrelevant yeah. because we're going to play the first round of the night next week. Uh, Why did which, we do that? I can't remember now. Because this one was ready. That one was it's just that's it. Yeah, that's it wasn't like some beautiful artistic thing. It was just like, yeah, it's just ready. No, what happened was I was halfway through the fuzzy proxy edit and Premiere Pro crashed. So I went, right, don't go back and do everything you did. Move on to the next one yeah. and then that one will be ready. I um, know that feeling very, mm. very well. But the, there is a two on two that completes that series, which is 2XAA and Oracle versus fuzzy proxy and JK LOL. Um, and that one has to go last, which will be in two weeks time from now. Two weeks time. And I've, I've got to say that that battle contains one of my favorite chip tracks ever. Not chip, chip battles, but my favourite chip tune tunes ever. I've ever, listened ever, to ever. that track a lot. Uh, it, I, mean, I, I don't want to sound too biased in this breakdown now of that battle, so I'll, no, I'll no, save no. all the love for afterwards. Uh, but we're just previewing anyway. So the next two weeks, we've got the UK versus USA. We're finally getting it out. And I've, I've got to say, for me, for me personally, Oracle, Oracle took that. He beasted it. It's frustrating because we had a bit of a delay here because we were watching the Twitch feed to re-watch it and re-listen so we had to cut it off halfway through oracle's third round and we were both just sat here going 
I've heard it so many times, but I would still have liked to have listened to the end of it. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Hilly OTM has said, got to be Oracle, really, hasn't it? If you have ears, it's Oracle. Thank you, by the way, Hilly, for subscribing. Uh, we're going to talk about that in a minute. Uh, Pixie Retro has said, UK. JK LOL just isn't filthy enough for me. Um... <laughs> so, round one. Round Oracle one. versus JK LOL. That was one of the strongest round ones I've ever heard. Yeah? It was really, really dubstepy, really, really filthy from Oracle. And it featured a very well-known voice in this studio. Uh, the, the final sample there that says Oracle is outstanding is actually our Hayden. <laughs> it's Hayden Hewitt, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Mr. Lively going, Oracle is outstanding. Yeah. <laughs> Which made me very, very happy. Um, round one was kind of what I was expecting from J.K. Lowell, I think. It was... Yeah. Um, we, we talked a little bit, a lot, not last week, the week before, about what, what we expected from the artist. And that was kind of what I expected from J.K. Lowell, uh, round one. It was quite it was strong. It was strong, and it was very much in his style. But I have heard tracks from his on his albums. Um, I think it was Kill Humanity on his last album. Mm. Uh, fantastic. Amazing, amazing, amazing track. If you just brought, like, the drop from that track to Chip Battles, it would have been a better, a better round one. Yeah. Oracle took it, in my opinion. Oracle took round one. What about round two? I agree with you, by the way, about the Oracle. If only just for the Hayden. <laughs> just for me, it's um, Again, round two. That was actually uh, Oracle. I've, I guess I've seen Oracle chip battle more than anyone else, aside from probably Disinfold Hat Brigade. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, and that was Oracle's strongest round two. Uh, maybe not the strongest round two in chip battle's history, but definitely Oracle's strongest round two. And I think that that really? was partly because after the Harley uh, battle, the Harley Likes Music battle, chip battle's number four, I told Oracle, I said that um, you clearly had your middle round as the weakest round. And I think now, I, I feel like this time around, he was like, no round is going to be my weakest round. <laughs> <laughs> That's an issue for me. That is an issue for me in terms of battlers doing the middle round, just almost sacking it off a little bit. We, we went through a bit of a phase where that was happening, weren't we? It's good placement, though. Um, you know, if you've got three rounds, you pick which is your best and which is your worst, and you put your worst one in the middle. Yeah, true, true, very, very true, yeah. Uh, that's what I did in my battle, but um, well, we haven't shown that one yet, have we? We'll show it, no, no, <gasps> we should show that one next week when Miss Kai's on. Should we show that for Miss Kai? Well, because I'm in it, so it. it should be a week where I'm not here, definitely. And you're not going to be here for Miss Kai? Well, I'm not going to be here talking about that chip battle. You're not going to be there, though? I might be over Go there, on. I might be oh, yeah. sat over there, but uh, I'm not going to be here talking about... The chip battles, the battle analysis. But if you're there... Okay, mm, uh, that Dunning-Kruger fella was awful. If you're handsome. there and she's talking about your battle and you're just like... Yeah, see, that's an issue what? also. I'm not, I'm not going to be there going, this guy, just say more st nice stuff about me. Nice <laughs> yeah. Do you know, she's been posting on Facebook about her costumes. I've got a costume as well. I've ordered a costume for that. For next week? Yeah. Oh, well. She's not the only one that can be all spantabulous. Is, it, is the costume sponsored by Insert Coin? No. No, I'm, I'm owned and I've sold out in this area. Yeah. It's waist down, so you're not going to see it, but she will. Okay. Right. <laughs> so round two. <laughs> Oracle took round two for me as well. Yeah. Uh, round three. Round three was probably J.K. Lowell's final, uh, strongest round in yeah. my opinion. Over history, that was his strongest round. Yeah, and you can see me in it just going, and that was legit. That was like, it sort of, because. For me, it was it was good. It was all right, but it wasn't. It was him doing good music. It wasn't battle music. But by round three, it felt like battle music. It felt like he was actually bringing something to defeat the other person rather than, you know, and get the crowd and all the rest of it. It felt like a proper round three. I'm inclined to agree. I'm inclined to agree. Round. Um, it, it was more in the like theme of chip battles, in the theme of battling with Game Boys, definitely. Uh, however, Oracle's final round. It was beastly. Beastly final round. <laughs> like, I mean, Oracle always, 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 every time he comes around my house, he's got a new loop to show me on his Game Boy. And yeah, it's like, yeah. oh, this is just another work of art that is never going to get released. Uh, he's got a lot of those pure works of art, just stacks of them on his Game Boy that would just never get turned into full songs because he's just like, well, that's perfect. I'm going to leave it exactly where it is. Uh, J.K. Lowell, on the other hand, he's quit chiptune, so... He's gone, hasn't he? He went all quiet after that, hasn't he? He changed his name and then he doesn't message me that much anymore either. Well, after after Oracle wiped the floor with him, did I'm Oracle? Not surprised. Did Oracle? Did you ruin him? Is that what you did? 
<laughs> I was wondering what that hand signal was about, but it's just Hayden celebrating. It's just Oracle ruining. No, JK Oracle. Law. Oracle is like the you know in wrestling terms, he is and he wants to be the bad guy of chip battles. He very much does, doesn't he? he wants to destroy people, oh. humiliate them. You've opened up a, do a door, like you've, you've opened up a whole world of. WWE comparisons with well, shit battles now. Who, he's he's like the Undertaker. Yeah, the Undertaker. Of course he is. He's like <laughs> he's like this little adorable Undertaker. That's exactly what he is. I always think of him that way. And he's and he's legit. He's he's um, and the, and 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 it's great because they never expect it coming. Oh, that was all right, wasn't it? Thanks for coming again for that. I didn't have time last week, and then you've always got a lot more to say about the chip battles. I just tend to go. I loved it. <laughs> <laughs> the post-battle analysis is an important part of this show. Yeah. Uh, and clearly last week you couldn't be trusted to do it alone. No, no, I can't be trusted to do it. Of course I can't. No, no, no. Right, uh, we're running out of time now, aren't we? What's going on? Sorry, uh, Grandad 11, I'm not dead yet. Oh, I don't know. There we go. Is that you, Grandad? <laughs> He's still, I'm not dead. I'm not dead. Um... <laughs> Grandad one one nine one. Is that J.K. Law? Is that is, it, is that you, J.K. Law? Why have you called yourself Grandad if it is? <laughs> Graham, I'm still chip tuning. It is, yeah. It oh, is, is it? Well, you don't used to send me everything. Why don't you send me all your music anymore? Hey, what's sorry? There's a bit of a delay here in terms of the thingy and all that. Oh yeah, there would be. Because uh, it's because you forget because you're there in live, but what they can see is way later. Because one time I did. Do you oh. remember I did that uh, competition and I was like the first one to type this and I went. Oh, it's his Battlenet account, Grandad1191. Oh, fair enough. That still doesn't explain why you're called Grandad. <laughs> why are you called Grandad? <laughs> why are you Not called Grandad? What's going on? <laughs> I love it, though. I do love it. I'll tell you what oh. else I love is Steferoth. That's a great name. Steferoth, yeah, yeah. Brilliant I read name. that. Yeah, I was that happy when I read that during our Nathan interview. Right, we're going to have to move on because we are very much running out of time. Oh, I didn't. I, have, you got those, have you got those stickers? Um, we've got a Red Bubble account now. Check this out. Um, it's a really cheeky. Go, go get him. Go get him. Go get him. What? I, I, so I, I told you we were doing this. <laughs> so if you do want to support the show and you want something really, really cool uh, that you can put on your cat or computer or anything, we have currently got these available from Red Bubble right now, and we've ordered some ourselves. And I'm going to stop turning that one because there's no need, isn't it? It's all thingy. Look at that. How cool are they? They do look great. They're really nice. I think actually. one needs to go on your laptop. What do you reckon? Yeah, yeah. Well, they're not mine. Am I allowed? Uh, you're oh. allowed. Uh, Lily Banks wants that one. Lily Banks wants. We'll sort that out after the show when we're not live on air. Eh? Yeah. Also, check this out, Numskull. Right? They've just. I got. A, I got a package this morning, and because I hate shopping, I do a lot of Amazon, Amazon stuff, and all that. So I get Graham Booth quite a bit. And today I got a package that said Graham Game Face. What? Stop! Stop! <laughs> what? Amazon. 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 <laughs> Amazon, <laughs> it's coming back in it. That's where it came from. That segment is coming back, by the way. We're going to do that again. Look at this. I got sent Atari socks, and uh, I've not even brought it all. Look at all this swag. I'm going to unbox these. Like, like, no, 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 the prizes. Oh no, no, I'm going to separate them so you can unbox them. We're going to set them up. So we, this is three prizes. Yeah, well, I'm going to I'm going to do a care package. So there's going to be a, so a pair of socks in each one, and then random things. So we've got an Atari 2600, we've got an Atari joystick here, Crash Bandicoot, Master System. They, they, Numskull chucked me loads of this stuff, and we're going to give it to you. Listen, watch, listen, watch next week. Next Thursday is when we're going to be giving it away. Listen on Sunday, and I'm going to give you the details, because I literally got, just got... Oh, I don't know, I really want that, honestly. It's Look, so cool, isn't it? Seriously. It's a little Master System on a keychain. I really would like that. I need to find it, but uh, my daughter grabbed these little PlayStation 3 cufflinks and just straight away she was like, because she knows the control pad, because yeah. that's how I put Netflix on. She doesn't associate with gaming in any way. She just went, she got the big pad and got these little cufflinks and just went, oh, <laughs> and they were gone. She's given them to her little Peppa Pig toys. I'm going to try and get them back off her. Uh, so yeah, next week we're going to be giving away three care packages with containing like random bits and bobs of all. How cool! That. Awesome. Um, there's more back at my house as well. I didn't even get a chance. I just grabbed a handful of it and chucked it in there. I'm going to be giving that away next week. So please hit that subscribe button. Speaking of which, as of today, if you have got Amazon Prime, you can then get Twitch Prime. It is included in your package. So if you're an Amazon Prime a subscriber, please, please do your Twitch Prime. Hit that subscribe button. Do the drop down menu. And we get like $2.50 a month. 
and it costs you nothing. It costs you absolutely nothing. You know they can actually pay. I've not stepped <laughs> up to asking that though. There's two options. There's Amazon Prime, Twitch Prime, and then you can just straight up give us money if you want. But just get on Redbubble, um, buy some merch. Yeah, don't do don't do that. If you're gonna give us five dollars, just go and buy go and buy. So you're getting something back, not just the show. But yeah, if you are an Amazon Prime or Twitch Prime member, please please subscribe, support the show. Uh, I was talking, I, I asked Nathan before about sort of working for free and all that. Game Face isn't some big media thing that makes a crap ton of money off free labour. Everyone involved with Game Face, we all volunteer, we all work for free and we do it for the love of it. But but it costs a lot of money. Our um, video, what is it, Adobe, it's run out now, isn't it? Completely gone. Uh, I managed to strike up a deal though. I'm editing for free for someone else and I get to use theirs. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, we, we need our, we need our, we need it back though, don't we? We, we definitely do. need we it back. Yeah, yeah. Um, so, I mean, you can you can just set up a, a, a monthly subscription to Adobe for us if you like. Just yeah, if it. anyone wants to just get that, please, that'd help. Uh, 90 quid for the website's coming up soon. $90, sorry, for the podcasting that we use constantly should we, should we like register like you know when you, when people get married you register at like house of fraser <laughs> yeah, yeah. like a wish list of stuff that you can just pay for for us <laughs> oh that's a really good idea i've been getting into all that recently actually uh, right let's skip the snes mini thing if you live in america and walmart they've cancelled all the snes minis i wanted to have a bit of a chat about that about nintendo and supply and demand and all that frustrations but we don't have the time we don't have the time uh, the nights of gaming if you live in manchester or close by. He's having another night on August the 1st at Faber Cafe. It's completely free. He puts a lot of time and effort into, I mean, just, it's worth it for the modded Wii's alone, to be honest. Yeah. He, those Wii's are great. You just pick it up and you're like, oh, it's got every game ever. It's worth really, it for really Super really. Smash Brothers Melee. If you go in, if you, I mean, yeah, of course you love that game. Of course you do. If you're watching the show, you love that game. Uh, and if it's like on a night when you can drink and play Smash Brothers Melee with people. It's quite chilled, isn't it? We, we should go, we should go. I've not been in ages. Speaking of not been in ages, August 8th, Manchester Gamers Unite. They've got their one year anniversary. And that's, that's another really good one as well, isn't it? Totally free. And the difference with that is it's more dev focused. So the devs are bringing in their games for you to play test. They're under construction. And yeah, you can test you can give them feedback it's wonderful get yourself there we're gonna have to go to that aren't we we need to get that bloody video out that we did uh yeah we need, well to be give honest it to, like... give it to the thingy. Um, thingy hannah hannah can edit it yeah, yeah just yeah. send it hannah She's if you're for... watching edit that video please edit it please because we've got a backlog we've not got adobe we need it right, that's it that's our show that was all right wasn't it uh, I enjoyed it. That was alright, wasn't it? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> is, that, is that how we wrap it up? I think I'd like to do that thing you know, that got... news presenters do, where Go we have, pretend to have a banging well, conversation. I've, I've, I've got a bit. I've got a little bit more. Um, yeah, yeah. I, I've got a lot of that in the thing here about uh, me in a pink wig and dress. Oh, I should wear a wig, shouldn't I? And then yeah, Granddad. Graham, I'm still chip tuning. We also have a, a question from Pix Retro asking about a regular podcast. I mean, just keep your eye out on the website. They do go up. Uh, they're starting to go up every week now. Yeah, they're getting there. They're, we're slowly catching up now. Um, um, definitely, Oracle is on the Twitch or Debs. Please, could you put a link to our Game Face? Uh, gamefaceshow.com forward slash radio you can see there we've got Mixcloud iTunes and Podomatic they are going up uh, in the last month there's been like three or four that have gone up we're slowly slowly getting into the rhythm of it uh, Corvo has very kindly volunteered to do it and she's learning you know she's never she's never done this before so she's she's getting up to speed and, yeah. and it's the same when I used to do the podcast it takes a while to learn to do it quickly and efficiently and all that um so there you go. Yeah, we will get there on the podcast. Tune in next week. Miss Kai is going to be right there. Right there, Miss Kai. And, and it, it, we need to remind her, actually, don't wear green. Because, oh, my God, though, she wears, like, a thousand colours at once, doesn't she, sometimes? Yeah, there'll be little, just tiny little invisible spots little, everywhere, just little green bits. But she just does that anyway because she's magic. Yeah, just day to day, you look at magical. her and she's disappearing and all the rest of it. Miss Kai is on next week. I'm going to leave you with a video that uh, Bish sent me. It's really, really cool, this guy. And everyone knows about this guy apart from me. Oh, yeah, yeah. Don't everyone worry. in Manchester sees him out on the street. Uh, I've just messaged him, actually. I'm going to try and get him on the radio show very, very soon. The Mario Busker. This is awesome. Bye-bye. I love you. Bye-bye.
Let's <laughs> go.